Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Pyatt and welcome to my YouTube channel. My goal is to help as many martial artists as possible in their journey and study of Bujutsu, whether you are a complete beginner or an experienced martial artist. I do videos every Friday, so if you like and enjoy this video, then don't forget to subscribe to get more just like it. Last week, we had a look at the applications of weight, uh, and I'll put a link to that the video at the, both at the end of this and in the description below. We're going to carry on with that theme, and we're going to look this week at the connection between weight and the stability that we need to create with the floor in order to maximise the amount of force that we can generate in our techniques. Now, when we're talking about power generation in martial arts, there are really two major sources that we always need to think about, which is the floor and driving off the floor and pushing the floor, which is largely about using our muscles in order to do that, and also our hips. Um, obviously, we've got our individual muscles, you know, for each, but those two major things add a significant amount of power to our techniques uh, and what enables a small person to generate seemingly a larger effect than just being big. So we're going to look at the application specifically of the normal force uh, and how we can use that to understand that connection with the floor in two or three different examples I'm going to show you. So follow me. So before we look at the example of uh, linking this to martial arts, I want to just give you a, a simple analogy that will help you understand connection to the floor. Uh, I want to give you the example of a jump. So if I've got a, a consider a jump, I've basically got two phases. I've got a crouching phase and then I've got a jump phase. Okay? Now, when I crouch, what I actually have to do is, at this point when I'm standing up, my weight, which is the force due to gravity acting downwards, and the normal force, which is the force that the floor is exerting back up on my feet, uh, which you can see in this little diagram here, so we've got the weight downwards and the normal force upwards, those two forces are balanced. So that's why I'm ultimately stationary at this point. I'm not accelerating in either direction. In order for me to drop my body, so in order for me to actually crouch, I can't change my weight. I can't actually do that um, because my mass as an overall is fixed. So I have to reduce the amount of force that I, if I am applying to the floor and the force is applying and the floor is applying to me. So my muscles relax momentarily, and what that does is it reduces the normal force of the floor, and my body starts to accelerate downwards. Uh, it then starts to decelerate as the muscles start to contract again and stop me. So I'm in this crouched position. So if we think of this as a graph of force on the floor, as I crouch, I actually reduce the amount of force I'm applying on the floor in the process of crouching. Now, as I start my jumping phase, I'm gonna, my muscles in my legs are going to contract. So I'm thinking about my quadriceps, my hamstrings, my gastrocnemius, my soleus. All those muscles are going to contract and I'm going to push to drive me up. So I'm going to accelerate my body upwards to a high enough speed that when I then lose contact with the floor, because I've already accelerated to a certain velocity, I'm going to keep going. So I accelerate through muscle contraction by pushing the floor and driving my body up. So ultimately, for me to increase the force that I'm exerting on the floor, and because of Newton's third law, if I increase the force I exert on the floor, I'm also exerting the force that the floor is exerting back on me, I have to use muscle contraction into the floor in order to create stability in my stance and in my body. So that principle is what I want to apply. So first I want to show an example of how we create power in a, a, a particularly tricky technique, which is doing maegeri and mawashigeri, front kick and round kick, off the same leg. So if I demonstrate the technique first, so we do front kick, rotate the back foot, come round, mawashigeri, and I'm just going to land back for this. Now the tricky bit with that is that because I'm on one foot and I'm not, um, you know, I'm not dropping the leg and swinging it back up, I need to create power by pushing the floor with my support leg. And I'm going to show you the consequences of the different ways that I can do that. So when I teach this technique to students, what I say is in order to generate power, you need to spiral downwards. You need to drop your weight. But if we analyse that motion, it's a little bit more than that. So I have my front kick. Now at this point. What I actually do first is I rotate my back foot and I slightly drop my weight as I turn. So the rotation of my back foot allows my leg to turn over. This contraction, this small drop, then allows me to push the floor with this foot so that I engage all of the muscles in my leg and my hip 
And so this support leg becomes stable. So when I kick, the power is transmitted to the end of my kick. If I did that in reverse, you'll see the effect. So if I show you on the back, I'm not too interested in the front kick. So I do my front kick. With my round kick, if I stay tall at this point, so I'm, you can see that this leg is straight, and I rotate and I do my round kick, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the round kick and then I'm going to drop and you'll see the effect. So you can see that I do the round kick and I drop just, just after that point. Now think about what we said with the crown. When I drop, I momentarily reduce the force I'm exerting on the floor. So I actually reduce my contact with the floor, and so I lose a great deal of stability. So when my foot is here and I drop, I lose the stability of the back foot. In other words, my back foot is no longer pushing the floor hard enough in order to give my whole body stability and keep me in place. So I'll show you that again. So here, the back foot is straight. I'm gonna do the kick and then drop, and you'll see the result. So even the small force, because I'm not belting the bag at this point, the small force that the bag exerts on my foot is enough to cause me to lose balance. Now the correct way of doing this is the drop comes before the kick. So what happens is we do the front kick, I drop in the spiral, so I'm here. I've now got this slight bend in this knee, so I can contract the muscles straight in this leg and kick, and you'll see the difference when I kick. So I can kick both harder, and I haven't fallen over, have my hands off the board, <clears throat> I haven't fallen over when I do the kick because the process of pushing the floor with this leg gives me stability. So I, I'm a lot stronger when I do it that way around. So if we're doing this technique, we do the front kick, we then drop and contract a little bit on the preparation, the jumbi for the moisture here, and then, as I do the moisture, I push to give me the power before coming back. Another thing I would just say on this combination, if you're practicing this front kick, round kick combination, is a couple of more basic things, is this would be wrong. So dropping the front knee. Because, pretty simple, it creates a massive gap to my opponent. So if I go one, two, that's no good. So I really need to keep my knee up here and then into the kick. So there's one practical example of this principle about using the connection to the floor um, to apply a technique. But I want to give you one more just before we finish, which is the kata sanchin. And Naha kata in particular, it's really important to emphasize that strong stability and connection to the floor. So if we take a look at the feet for sanchin, so the back foot is straight, the front foot is turned slightly inwards in order to create torque. The hips are contracted forwards, and we activate these muscles. So if you're testing the, the feet and the stability in Sanchin, what you want to do is check the gap between the feet. So the feet are quite literally creating suction with the floor in a motion called tako ashi. Tako is octopus and ashi is foot. So you're quite literally creating suction by pushing the feet out and then contracting the toes in. Rather than if I do this, if I just contract my toes, you can see I lift the arch of the foot, and so I lose contact, so instead we push out, and so I want to keep a good contact. Then, these muscles, by doing that action, are engaged, so these muscles should be contracted and strong. So that gives me stability in my entire lower body, and so I'm really pushing the floor. So then when a partner, when my partner pushes me or I'm pushing him, I have stability. If I was here as an example, my opponent was to push, I'd fall over really, really easily. So this principle of engaging the muscles in order to apply more force onto the floor is so that the, force, all, the floor also applies more force back onto me. I'm increasing the normal contact for, force with the floor and therefore massively increasing my stability. So when you do this stance, think about, that's what your muscles are doing. So you've got that feeling of pushing down and out, like your feet are like a tree root, sort of extending out. And so you get that stability. But it's about increasing this force of the floor through muscle contraction to then ultimately increase both the stability of your technique and then the power delivery. 
I hope you enjoyed that video guys and if you've got any questions or there's anything you want to ask more about please don't forget to put it in the comments below. Um, like I said at the start I do videos every Friday so if you like this one don't forget to subscribe. You can click more of our videos by clicking the links here, here and here and you can click the icon down in the bottom corner to subscribe. Hope you enjoyed it, see you next week guys.